Fusion, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got a little bit of everything for everybody. You see what I'm saying? It's not one dimensional. It's got a real moral theme to it. You see what I'm saying? Cause I, I, I got different characters speaking from different perspectives. Oh. So you know, I got your real street character, and then I got like your motherly character, that mentor mm -hmm. who done got experiences. So, and I got your street hood element in there. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's a fusion. It's just not a one dimensional book. It got its subplots in it. So, you know, I took my time and I crafted it and I just didn't write a book. I studied how to write a book with the protagonist, antagonist, the climax, the resolution. So this, you know, I put a lot put into together. it. Yeah, so what inspired you to write the book? You just woke up one day and say, write a book? I mean, what? Basically just looking for a new hustle. You see what I'm saying? And, and Wahida Clark, Vicky Springer, all these urban book writers, all of them came out the joint and then you read about how these cats making millions of dollars writing books. So I was like, damn, I got the same experiences. So, you know. Well, I'm gonna try my talent. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You, know you know need to learn to tell. put the talent okay. to the test, yeah, man. You know, basically, this genre is, is just an extension of hip hop. Of hip hop, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I can't rap. Uh, African, I, yeah. uh, African American culture. It's our culture. It. Basically, it. And if it's our yeah. culture, then it's our pool of money. That's right. It's our economical cookie jar. That's right. You talking about right now? This genre is doing three hundred million dollars a year. Yeah. That's where it's at right now. So you know, in the next ten years, you know what I'm saying. There's so many brothers and ancestors is getting into it. Matter of fact, the sisters dominate. Uh, Wahida Clark, uh, Vicky Stringer, uh, uh, Nikki Turner, uh, Terry Woods. All the major publishing companies is owned by women. You see what I'm saying? So it's, you know, it's definitely not a male dominated industry. So there's room, brother. Yeah, yeah there's room. Um, there's room. Yeah, definitely. I'm trying to come and yeah, kick the door. Right. I'm trying to set some whole new trends. You know what I'm saying? So it's Hollywood. Like I said, every book that I wrote, I got I got the script to it. So I got the book and the film script. So every book that come off my publishing company is going to have a script to it. If you can't even put a script to the novel, I won't even accept it. I don't even want the submission. Because we telling a story, but we telling the visual. You see what I'm saying? So I want every book that come off Hollywood publishing, it's got to have a script. Or I won't even deal with it. So that's our niche. You see what I'm saying? That's okay. our concept and that's what's really going to separate Given us the visual. from other people. Making right? sure people so see it all the time. So where is the story based at? Is it based in just Savannah or is it experiences Well, this this countries? particular story, most of my story is based in Savannah. You see what I'm saying? Right now and I would imagine once I start traveling and I could just say if I wanted to write a story in LA, I could just go out there, rent me a room, two, three months in LA, learn the culture and then I could put a set in LA but not really you know what I'm saying? I know Savannah like the back of my hand, so all my settings took place there. Now you know that's gonna cause a lot of controversy now, you know, because you know Savannah got these little stories that they tell and they keep the hood on the low. You know, we're a historic town, yeah. so you know, you're gonna, 
you know, you're going to raise a lot of eyebrows with that. Well, so, you no. know, that's the... Yeah, we need that, though. If, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because... Show them the other side, the real side. Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to give people a real glimpse of what's really going on from, you know, you really get into the mind of the author, and I was out there. So, you when you get into this book, you, you won't even think that I wrote this book. A lot of people won't even think I wrote this book. You know what I'm saying? Because some of the characters, it's like things you want to say that you couldn't say, you can let the character say it. Mm -hmm. And that was the good part. They'd be like, damn, man, I never knew you was like that because I wrote it, so it had to come from me. <laughs> so you're going to have to respect it and say, damn, man, I couldn't imagine you was Slow like crap. that. People so judgmental, yeah. you see what I'm saying, and so stereotypical, you know what I'm saying? A, 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 lot of, a lot of times people judge, what I've learned in my experience, the ju that judgmental nature and, and that, and that uh, you know, that element of a person normally be the fact that they can't produce themselves. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. people, they can't tap into their own talent. Creative they can't right. challenge themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't see anything in themselves. So the minute they see a guy like you, you know, who can hit the game as hard as you hit it, and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, well, you know, people that hit the game like that, they ain't got no sense. Right. But then you take and you step away from that format of things, and then you put yourself in another light. You know, and they're like, oh man, you know, and then you, and then and then and just on the outside looking in, people people are like, oh man, I ain't, you know, so some people don't know how to deal with that. So mm -hmm. you know, people can actually despise your mission. That's right. All because they can't figure how yours seem to smoothly sail on down the river. That's right. <laughs> you know, and I, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you can relate. To no doubt. Like I say, the game evolved. You know, like eight ball them said years ago, it's space age pimping right now, man. Everything. And that was digital. years ago. Years ago. That was that's in why. 93. And I'm, and I'm just catching up with that. Yeah, now. that's in 93. Uh, like, if I would have caught up with that then, what, what they were saying, saying man? it was yeah. prophetic space age, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you think this was what, 91, 92. And these boys are saying it was space age pimping. Back then. But now yeah. look where we at now. You see what I'm saying? So you got to evolve, man. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, Everything evolved. evolved. You know, you got to take it to the next level. So, like I said, my slogan is from birds to words. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go at this game here with the same intensity that when I was hustling in the street. You see what I'm saying? Because all I need is a commodity. I'm a hustler. I never considered myself just a drug dealer. You see what I'm saying? Because I, I was in other businesses and other things. My, my only goal was to be successful. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like I can do it with this, with this book. Yeah, this is necessarily you know, had to cling to. Yeah, I, I can didn't sell it. necessarily had to cling to a certain lifestyle <laughs> of doing things. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, 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 it don't matter to me. Like I said, if somebody give me a track, if we had a truck full of hubcaps, we're going to go get paid. I'm I'm <laughs> if you get it to me for the right price, right. So we're going to make some money. Got to be profitable. Yeah, what it is. Got to be profitable. As long as I can see a profit, we could put our hands on that. It could be old hubcap, the vintage. I got vintage hubcap. Because somebody out there looking for them. You see what I'm saying?